African-American art history really began to take shape in 1925 when Elaine Lott published his seminal text, The New Negro, an extended version of the March 1925 issue of Survey Graphic Magazine, which served as the substantiating publication of the Harlem Renaissance. When Charles S. Johnson, the editor of Opportunity Magazine, which was the official publication of the National Urban League. And let me say a little bit more about Johnson here as well. Um, he was a celebrated American sociologist. He was the first black president of Fisk University, and he was the director of research and investigation for the Urban League. But in 1924, he was presenting to a group of prominent New Yorkers, New York Society at the Grand Civic Club, whom he thought to be the most promising black writers. And one of the members of that audience felt like those writers deserved a wider publication. This person was Paul Kellogg, who was then the editor of Survey Graphic Magazine. And Survey Graphic was a publication devoted to social work in America. And just for clarity, pictured here is not Paul Kellogg. This is actually the famed German painter and graphic designer, Winold Rice. Rice illustrated the March 1925 issue of Survey Graphic for Paul Kellogg. And as a German immigrant, he was very, very close to many of the influential artists, scholars, and political leaders of the Harlem Renaissance. Um, in fact, he was an early mentor to painter Aaron Douglas. And this is the portrait of the tenor, Roland Hayes, that he painted and designed for the cover of Survey Graphic. So Paul Kellogg approaches Elaine Locke after that November 1924 Civic Club dinner, and he asks him if he wants to compile a special issue of Survey Graphic that would examine the Harlem Renaissance. And Locke, the famed Howard University professor, American philosopher, first African-American Rhodes Scholar, and patron of the arts, he was committed to promoting the artistic achievement of African-Americans, so he really jumped at Kellogg's offer. And the result was the 1925 issue of Survey Graphic entitled Harlem, Mecca of the New Negro. It had stands just four months after Locke and Kellogg's conversation. Locke then extends the Survey Graphic issue into the New Negro, which really sets the stage for African-American art history and criticism. And I consider the New, the New Negro to be a precursor text because it doesn't provide critical analysis of visual works that it presents or the systems right from which they're created. But it is important to African-American art historical origins because it's, it's the first collected volume of scholarly commentary on African-American visual, literary and musical practice. Um, it's also the first work of its kind on the artistic contributions of African Americans to the broader American culture. And it provides a sort of examples, right, of African American literature, song, and visual production. After the publication of The New Negro, Locke quickly became the premier Black scholar of African American art. And he went on to publish two more works, um, The Negro Artist Past and Present in 1938, and The Negro in Art, a pictorial record of the Negro artist and the Negro theme in art in 1940. And though The Negro in Art recognizes the dearth of information surrounding African American participation as both practitioners and subjects of the fine and decorative art, it still lacks significant art criticism um, and analysis of the work C includes, but it's super important because it sheds a much needed light on this area of African-American history at the time. The text is organized thematically. So the sections are entitled The Negro as Artist, The Negro in Art, and The Ancestral Arts. So Locke is also recognizing the importance to studying African art history, right, in connection to the Black experience in the States. Each section of the Negro in Art opens up with a short but thorough scholarly commentary and then like follows that with a chronological arrangement of artwork. And he ends each section with a small biographical sketch of each artist. The opening statement of the forward declares, the Negro creative career in the fine arts is longer and more significant than is generally known. And the main idea of this portfolio is to document this pictorially for the wider knowledge of the general public, but to treat adequately, even in barest outline, the art history of the Negro, one should trace, in addition to the career of the Negro artist, the course of the Negro theme in art generally. As is becoming increasingly recognized, this too is a vital part of the Negro's cultural history and influence.
BIA is a document used to preserve and promote the contributions of the African American arts community. So this content is made free of charge. If you would like to support our efforts, please visit buyblackart.com. Live with the art you love.